The historic criminal trial of former President Donald Trump is now underway. It's the first time in American history that a current or former president will be trialed, tried in a court of law. Today is jury selection. He is facing 34 counts of falsifying business records to hide hush money payments made to cover up an alleged affair with adult film star Stormy Daniels. Trump has pleaded not guilty to all charges. On the way into the courtroom, he called the trial, quote, an assault on America. Nothing like this has ever happened before. There's never been anything like it. Every legal scholar said this case is nonsense. It should never have been brought. It doesn't deserve anything like this. There is no case, and they've said it. People that don't necessarily follow or like Donald Trump said this is an outrage that this case was brought. CBS News campaign reporter and attorney Katrina Kaufman is with us to break down more of what we can expect today. Uh, Katrina, walk us through what should be in our minds as jury selection began. Hi, Lilia. So we have not even gotten to jury selection here yet. So far today, the judge has been squaring away a number of issues. The first one was that Trump had asked him to recuse himself from the case. And the judge has said that there is no conflict of interest here and that a judge is as obligated not to recuse himself when it's appropriate as he is to recuse himself when it is. So Judge Mershon will be presiding over this case. They've also been talking about different forms of evidence and whether they can come in. For example, there's the Access Hollywood tape when Trump had talked about groping women. and. The judge has said that the tape cannot be played. He finds it much too prejudicial, but they can enter the transcript. So it's a small win for Trump and a small win for the prosecution there. Um, another thing that he said can't come in is that the affairs that are related to these charges, they occurred allegedly while Melania was pregnant with Barron Trump and right after she had them. And the judge also said that that cannot be entered into the court. Um, and another thing the prosecution has said is that in a couple of recent tweets, they say that Trump has actually violated his gag order. So the judge will likely be addressing that today as well. Ah, right. I want to remind our audience uh, joining us that it, you're not in front of a Trump rally. This is uh, the actual trial against the former president. But of course, you can expect his supporters uh, to be around and for him to, in some ways, uh, use the moment to campaign. Uh, walk us through, if you will, Katrina, though, uh, over what this case is about. We keep calling it the hush money, but it's not over the money that was allegedly paid to Stormy Daniels, but rather how the Trump team or President, former President Trump himself uh, falsified or allegedly falsified documents to hide uh, that uh, hush money payment. Walk us through what, what it is. Yes. Absolutely. Well, on its face, this is a case about the falsification of business records. But what the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, says this case is really about is election interference. He says that this payoff to Stormy Daniels that happened in the days before the 2016 election deprived voters of crucial information that could have turned the election. And the story here is that the DA alleges Trump was part of a larger scheme that involved Trump, Michael Cohen, and David Pecker, the head of American Media, which runs the National Enquirer, uh, to suppress damaging stories from coming out about him right before the election. And as part of that, Michael Cohen paid Stormy Daniels $130,000 to keep her silent about an alleged affair that she had with Trump. And what's actually at issue here is when Trump reimbursed Cohen, which is while he was pregnant, uh, he was president, sorry, it was through a series of checks. And so there were 11 checks, 12 ledger entries, and 11 invoices that make up these 34 falsification of business record charges in the end. So let's talk a little bit more about that catch and kill part of it, because I think, you know, it's it's worth reminding the audience that why this case became bigger, too, is what this whole media strategy or the strategy was about to further his chances of winning the 2016 election. Um, how did that all work out? So, yeah, I'm glad that you asked that. It actually came up today because there was a very key meeting that happened between Trump, Cohen, and David Pecker about this catch-and-kill scheme, and they were discussing whether or not it could come in. The judge has said that it is 
really crucial to this narrative. And so in addition to Stormy Daniels, there were a couple other stories that the National Enquirer suppressed. There was one involving Karen McDougal, a former Playboy model who also alleged that she had an affair with Trump, and one from a former Trump doorman who claimed that Trump had a child out of wedlock. I believe it was with a, a Trump Tower housekeeper. And that was later proven not to be a true story, but they still paid him $30,000. Mm -hmm. and. The DA says that Trump really didn't want these stories to come out leading up to the election, especially on top of the Access Hollywood tape. He was worried with Stormy Daniels that another scandal, he just couldn't survive it. And Katrina, what can we expect uh, will be the defense in this case? What has Trump and his uh, legal team said about what they admit to, what they don't? Uh, have they has he denied the affair at all? Has that not played a role? Absolutely. Trump has denied the affair. And a key strategy for them is that Michael Cohen is a crucial witness for the prosecution. And they are really going to attack his credibility. Um, Trump is doing that already in tweets. You know, he's called him a liar. The other day, he actually referred to him as death. But Michael Cohen does have a history of perjuring himself on the stand. And so they're really going to to bring that up to ding his credibility and, as a result, the prosecution's case, because he's such a key part of it. So they're, they're doubling down and they're insisting, I mean, the defense is that the payments were legit, that they were legal payments. Are they insisting? Yes, they okay. are. So, so essentially, when, when the payments were made to Michael Cohen, they were recorded as being for legal expenses related to a retainer agreement. And they say that that's the case, but what the prosecution says is really Michael Cohen was being paid back mm -hmm. for the Stormy Daniels payment. Yeah. Katrina, thank you so much. We'll keep talking to you.